Hello, and welcome to the Beamdog stream for Baldur's Gate Siege or Dragon Spear, da -da -da. which yesterday we finally announced a release date for. Amber, would you like to fill everyone in on the details? I am so happy to actually be able to share details. I'm learning. Okay, so I've been at this job for about like five months now as the marketing and publishing coordinator. The number one rule I've learned is that everything takes way longer than you think it's going to take. I'm building in like. If I think something will come on the 1st, it'll probably come on the 14th. So I had been planning to share information uh, much earlier than this. Mm -hmm. And it's just been this waiting game of, can we tell now? Can we tell now? And now we can. So that's very exciting. Believe me, you don't want to know how the sausage gets made. <laughs> just be happy in your ignorance of how game development works. At the same time, it's a really great job and a really great company. So I love it. Mm -hmm. But yes, today we are talking about Siege of Dragon Spear. Uh, Pre-orders, which went live yesterday on our website, www.seatofdragonspear.com. And we've got a couple different options for people. You can pre-order the game if you have Baldur's Gate on Beamdog. If you don't, then it'll automatically add the game to your cart. Uh, if you've bought on a different store than beamdog.com, then it's best if you wait until the game becomes available on the store that you did mm -hmm. buy from which in most cases will be March 31st. If you did buy Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition on Steam, you can still buy Siege of Dragon Spear on Beamdog, but you'll need to request a Steam key, which we can help you out with. Indeed. And we also have a Collector's Edition. This is very big news. This is the big news. Yes. This, is, this is it. So we haven't leaked anything about the Collector's Edition, except Trent made some like cryptic uh, tweets, I think. And other than that, we're extremely pleased and proud to be able to announce that we're doing mm. a physical box set. It's going to be a collector's edition. You should see it up on your screen right now. I really want to uh, do some kind of a setup where we're like, what's that, like home shopping network, you know, kind of thing. And we're like talking to people on the phone and having the physical thing mm -hmm. that we can model, mm -hmm. but we don't have that right now. So instead, we'll In just show future, you pictures. One day. Yeah, one day. And, uh, We'll talk about each of the individual items as they go across your screen through the magic of technology. So uh, if you are an ancient of days like me, you probably remember the Baldur's Gate 2 Collector's Edition. And the Siege of Dragon Spear Collector's Edition is a total throwback to that because it's got this thick-ass spiral-bound manual that's really, really great. Um, you get a cool box. Yes. Uh, I believe it's made out of wood. I'm not sure what it's made of, but it has the full leather exterior okay. texture and then it's got the dragon spear logo on the front cover and then it pulls open and reveals all the little goodies that are packed inside in this kind of velvet like interior setup it's a box of treats box of treats indeed so something i'm very excited about is that we've got an official siege of dragon spear tabletop dice set mm -hmm. the pattern uh, or the design on the dice was actually done in-house so our own art team went ahead and used a template to create a Siege of Dragon Spear theme for each of the dice. Trent wanted to do a six dice set, and I said, no, no, Trent. We are going to go that extra mile and do a seven dice set, and that is what we did. So you get your standard tabletop set, D4, D6, D8, D10, D percentile, D12, and a D20. Mm -hmm. And a little collector's bag, too. Mm -hmm. Now, these dice will come in handy because uh, I think at the end of this month, there's a new issue of The Familiar that might have some character sheets that you'd like to Maybe. employ in your uh, in your own game, perhaps. We'll see. We'll see. But More yeah, the familiar, the familiar that comes out at the end of the month, by the way, is all Siege of Dragon Spear content. So mm -hmm. if you don't have it yet, it's free on iOS and Android. Definitely check it out. And you can also read the familiar uh, on our website, thefamiliar.beamdog.com. Yeah. I was also really surprised by the response we got from people buying actual physical game discs. I thought people would be like, oh, well, I really want the goodies, but the game disc is kind of optional. Mm -hmm. Instead, on the forums, we've had a really big response of people yeah. being excited that people they're going to get a really physical this. game disc in the DVD case, a uh, two CD set of the Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition, and Siege of Dragon Spear soundtracks. Mm -hmm. And uh, inside the front cover of the DVD case is a little card that's kind of a throwback to you remember those uh, user interface cards you got? Oh yeah. Like a shortcuts yep. card and, and it you has put it right in front of your keyboard and it's mm -hmm. like F twelve magic mythyl. Exactly. That's what uh, that's, that's what, what this card was inspired by. And uh, so yeah. And those uh, all the content that you get on discs 
you'll also get a digital copy of. Mm -hmm. The soundtracks are in MP3 and FLAC format. Yeah. Which I had never heard of, but apparently it's a really big thing. And the uh, the game that comes on uh, the DVD is DRM free, so you can take that sucker and install it anywhere. Um, we're very very happy to be able to offer that. Um, another thing you're going to get with the collector's edition is this super awesome um, field report by one of the characters in Seed of Dragon Spear named Bents Duncan. And on the field reports, this cool sort of faux leather booklet, and on it is this metallic coin that you can take out and try and pawn off to people at stores. Um, <laughs> it's really, really cool, though. We've, Actually, we've had, though, uh, I just happen to have one of the coins. One of the coins here that you can look at in, in your tiny, tiny screen. Mm -hmm. But like, look how mm -hmm. heavy it is. It's like really heavy. I can tell how heavy it is. Yeah. It's, it's very definitely heavy. solid metal. It's got the ball skull on one side. It's got the Dragon Spear medallion on the other side. This is definitely a substantial piece it of is. memorabilia. If, if you're you will a be big, happy to have. If you're a big Pog player, this is the slammer <laughs> that you want. You're not going to find this anywhere else but in the Collector's Edition. So yep, definitely nowhere get else. Your slam I'm, on. I'm just going to put this away right now since that's the only way you can get it is in the Collector's Edition. Or you edition. can rob us, but please don't. <laughs> Uh, we had some questions already about the collector's edition. Do you have to pre-order it to get all these items or can you get them later? At the moment, you do have to pre-order the collector's edition. We don't have any plans or actual like ability to sell these collector's items individually. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to pre-order it. Although um, the digital copies of the soundtrack and the game that you get when you order the collector's edition will drop on March 31st with the rest yeah, of the you're, orders. You're gonna get You'll have to wait a few months later for the actual physical product yeah. to ship. Um, we're estimating around June right now. And of course, we'll be sending out emails and stuff to pre-order people when the, uh, yeah. the factory is ready. We'll speed it up if we can, but production being what it is, it takes a long time to produce collector's editions. Um, so you get the awesome field report, which sort of details a lot of the stuff that's happening north of Baldur's Gate regarding this massive crusade that's running around and causing mm -hmm. trouble. And that's a lot of fun. It's full of illustrations, and it's an in-universe book. And in addition to that, you get a sweet cloth map of the mm -hmm. Sword Coast from around Dragon Spear down to uh, the Cloud Peaks, I believe. This is basically... Uh a replica or an inspired by the world map from Siege of Dragon Spear. Mm -hmm. So you might not see some locations that you remember from Baldur's Gate 1 because this map is specific to the Dragon Spear right, timeline yeah. or storyline. Um, somebody asked, will there be a retail version of Dragon Spear, just the regular edition in stores? Um, we'd like to do that, but uh, we still don't have any plans regarding that yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Scott P480 asked, how limited is the collector's edition? So... Are we ready to say exactly how many? I don't think we're ready to say exactly we're how many. We're not going to say how many, but it is very limited, and we are selling them at what I feel is an astonishing rate. I don't really know a lot about the e economics of selling collector's editions, but I'm kind of bowled over by mm -hmm. the response to this thing. I had no idea people loved collector's editions this much. I'm very, very excited yeah. about how popular the, the CEs have been. Um, I don't think there's a chance we're going to sell it this weekend. So, you know, you can breathe easy if you you need to wait a few days, but don't wait too long. Yeah. <laughs> um, for anybody just joining us, again, the release date for Cedar Dragon Spear will be March 31st. Mm -hmm. So this month, it's coming up real, real quick. And that's for the uh, Windows Mac version on Beamdog.com, yeah. Windows Mac and Linux on Steam on March 31st. And then our tablet versions will drop later as we're able to test and release yeah. them. Um, and as well, uh, back to the collector's edition, you of course get this really thick, really cool spiral bound manual that's got a bunch of updated information about the games. Um, this teaches you everything from the base mechanics of D&D &D to specifically how to play Infinity Engine games. So it's a lot of fun. It's one of those mm -hmm. things that you sit on your toilet and read when you're not playing the game. So I would love this cover art so much. Uh, the direction we gave the art department was to evoke some of the old second edition um, D and D manual mm -hmm. covers that had yeah. like a big f cool fight scene with like a, an interesting monster. We didn't give any details beyond that. Just let their imaginations run wild. Um, I don't know if you heard this, Phil, but one of the art artists had a nightmare that our collector's edition couldn't go to sell because. Uh, our partners said that the Adventurer's Guide cover would look better with Kylo Ren on it from the new Star Wars movie. And I was like, well, you know, that's not wrong. But at the same time, probably. You know what? No, I agree. Let's, let's push this whole thing back. Let's re engineer this. <laughs> 
No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> no. Um, what else do you get, Alex? Next slide, please. No. You also get a pendant. It's a little metallic dragon head that you can hang around your neck. I don't believe we have a picture of it. But in the, uh, if you go back to the, um, the packet or the picture of the entire package, you can see everything in the box. This video will go up on YouTube after uh, we finish airing today. So uh, usually it takes us a couple days yeah. to just, we go through and make sure the audio is nice and everything like that. And then it'll go up on our YouTube channel. So if you so, want to go back and see any of these amazing elements for the collector's edition, you can. If you point your earballs to the screen there between the map and the manual, you can see a little shot of the cool pendant that mm. you get. And it's a, a dragon head in sort of a bronzy gold color. On a, um, on a fake leather strap. Yeah. And it's, you can wear it around your neck or you could whip it around and hit people, one of the two. Oh, yeah, you can see on the T-shirt that we will be giving away soon, it's this dragon head but in metal and yeah. hanging on a pendant. Pretty cool, huh? Very exciting. You can take out somebody's eyes with it. It's awesome. But we don't recommend doing that. Yes, we don't Please recommend. Please use your collector's edition safely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, that's the collector's edition. It's available yes. now. It's a uh, limited edition. Please go buy it and give us all of your money. On the For website. Now, so go ahead. Uh, do, uh, $129.99 US plus shipping. Uh, the hardest part, I think, of getting the collector's... Okay, not the hardest part. The whole process of getting the collector's edition together was difficult. The team worked really hard on it. Mm -hmm. But figuring out shipping options was definitely tricky. Yeah. Uh, for small companies, you don't get a lot of... Uh, leeway on what the different shipping companies will offer you so we've done the best we could to offer somewhat reasonable shipping prices and uh you can go on the website and take a look and see what we've got available um somebody asked i already own baldur's gate enhanced edition can i gift the copy of baldur's gate enhanced edition that comes with the collector's edition um you could so when you buy the collector's edition you get a digital key as well as the drm free disc so mm -hmm. if you want to give that key away you can you just have to wait a little longer to get your disc in the mail so you can install siege without any drm and that was his 12 thanks for watching his 12 his 12 yeah Saying, right. trying to pronounce usernames is always great sorry if i mangle anybody's I think we are uh, ready to hand out a prize here. Yeah. So uh, what we will do is in the chat, we will select at random one of the people that are in there right now, and they will receive a beautiful Siege of Dragon Spear t-shirt, which we you can use large. to adorn your body or perhaps hang it on the wall. Hang it on the wall. Yeah, or you could frame it like a jersey. Yeah. It's pretty that cool. That would be awesome. So there are, uh, if you want to be entered in the draw, type ex exclamation mark prize so exclamation mark and then the word prize in the chat room right no now space. no spaces between and then you'll be automatically entered in the draw and it'll take a minute for that mm -hmm. to go on in the meantime phil why don't you tell us a little bit about what we'll be seeing in the demo today so today we're going to be showing you a little bit of the city of Baldur's gate that you will be returning to after 15 years or so 18 years 18 a long time when was 1998 it was a while ago it was 18 years ago um and then after that uh we're gonna show you some of the cool difficulty options that we have and how the different levels of difficulty impact the gameplay we'll break that down for you and after that we're going to show you one of the wilderness areas in the game known as dead man's pass Ooh. so uh did we get our winner yet so if you're just tuning in you uh, were just giving away a prize right now. And the winner of the t-shirt is Craymond727. Congratulations, Craymond. You cray, yeah. Mond. You can email uh, pr at beamdog.com to pick up your prize. Or just come to our office. One of the two. Oh, sorry. You actually have to private message uh, on the Twitch stream. Private message the Beamdog account. Yeah, private message the Beamdog account on the Twitch stream. There you go. And we will get in touch with you after that to uh, claim your prize. So Congratulations, glad. prizes. So glad we rehearsed this. Given out. Yeah, absolutely. This is all live. Uh, live obviously, TV, man. like Twitch. None of this so, is scripted. Yeah. <laughs> Ask your questions in the uh, chat room if you want an answer in real time. Mm -hmm. Well, right. semi real time. Semi real time. Right. Let's uh, kick it over to the game here and we will load our first save. Uh, I should also mention that this is a brand new build that we got just for the stream so there may be a couple little hinky bits here and there mm -hmm. but we really wanted to show off the new features that could only come with the stream or with the new build i mean 
As so well, we're taking that risk. We're taking that risk of showing a bug so we can well, show you new features. We've held back certain uh, UI elements that we still want to show off. So you will see some new stuff here, but uh, there's still more to be seen. Um, probably first off, eagle-eyed viewers will notice that uh, when I mouse over a character, I get a little sprite highlight now. And in a really tight battle scenario where you've got a bunch of monsters clustered together around a guy, it is proving to be enormously useful. Is that an optional feature, Phil? It is an optional feature. Everything that we're adding in terms of UI can be toggled because we know that people have been playing BG for 20 years, and for a lot of people, they like it a certain way. And we agree, BG is a game that you should be able to customize. You should be able to make it play the way that you want it to. So all this stuff is optional. Optional. If you uh, look really close, you can see that all of the sprites, in addition to when I mouse over them, they get a highlight. When I don't mouse over them, they have a little bit of a, a darker outline to them to help them read much, much more easily when they're on the background. And again, this is something that you can disable, but it enormously helps with your visibility. So we have a few questions from the chat room but that I'll answer as you go walking around, Phil. Um, D Crunch said, will you give a bit more info on the Shaman class, like race restrictions? So I didn't do any research on that before the stream started, so I'm going off memory here. But I believe the races are human, half-elf, and half-orc are the ones that can be shamans. And they, I know they can use axes, and they can wear leather armor, and like hide armor and things like that. Uh, but that's all I remember off the top of my head. I can put some info in the forums afterwards. Uh, or one of the... Uh, one of the Beamdog personnel in the chat room might be able to answer your question. Uh, Jum Jum TV asked, will a Shaman character be importable into BG2 EE? Yes, after the patch comes out. And this seems like a good time to mention that we're going to be starting a public beta soon for Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. And the public beta is going to be to help with the patchwork that will make these games compatible with Siege of Dragonspear. All the information on the public betas will be on our forums uh, on beamdog.com, so if you are interested, you should check it out there, and you can keep an eye on the postings to learn more information about the betas. Brastius asks, can I buy one of those shirts? Sadly, no. We don't have a merchandising license. We're not allowed to sell um, goods on their own, which is why we do amazing things like Collector's Edition. It's something we'd like to do in the future. It's just not on the radar right now, I'm afraid. Oh man, I got slowed. This is ridiculous. <laughs> You're a jerk, Corlaz. <laughs> I think it's Corlage. One of the two. We change pronunciations every day. So what are you doing right now, Phil? Where are you? Um, I entered the basement of the Ducal Palace, which uh, at present is being used to uh, hold a few prisoners, including this wizard that I encountered earlier. Uh, unfortunately, she has slowed me down quite a bit, and so now I'm walking like a tortoise. And I'm going to let these Flaming Fist guards just sort of deal with her and eventually die while we go and do something else fun. All right. Sounds good. Actually, I'm going to load my save because being slow sucks. It's never fun. Uh, John Irenicus with an I asked if we get to enjoy Edwin's company in uh, The Siege of Dragonspear. You do you indeed do. get to enjoy Edwin's company. And in fact, we brought back Edwin's original voice actor, Jim Meskimen. Mm -hmm. And he's even got a little mini individual quest that you can get if you have them in your party at a certain location, at a certain time. Uh, Siga asked, is this a release version or an older stable version? It's our brand new um, version, but it's not the release version yet. We're still on testing. Yeah. Um, but it's very close to what we'll be releasing eventually. Yeah. There's still a bunch of UI tweaks that have yet to go in. We've built them. We're testing them. Once they're stable, we're happy. We'll merge them in. But at present, uh, this is sort of our demo build. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be showing off the difficulty slider later and some really amazing developments we've made with difficulty levels and also the AI that we've substantially improved. Speaking of the AI, actually, let's wait until we have some party members and then I'll show it off here. Mm -hmm. Um, one Good of the idea. neat things about Dragon Spear that wasn't in the originals is if you look really closely, so I'm playing a character named Jade who's a half elf, and half elves have infravision, which lets them see characters in the dark. So when you have infravision, a character that is in the dark will appear with sort of a red tint to them. Um, however, it looks kind of wonky when they have a red tint to them, but they're standing right next to a light source. So in Dragon Spear, and this is a feature that will be ported to the other games. 
Uh, it's conditional. So if they're near a light source, they won't be red. But if they're in darkness, they will be. So there's sort of this gradual transition from red tint to nothing. And that ties into the, the light sources in the game. So mm -hmm. it looks really neat. You can see here, these uh, characters aren't really tinted. But as you get further and further into the darkness, they are. So we are in the streets of Baldur's Gate right now. And as you can see, they are packed as hell. Um, a refugee or a refugee crisis has been flooding the city due to the crusade that's happening up north. And so the Grand Dukes are having a real bear of a time dealing with all these people that are demanding that they do something or provide them with shelter in some way. I'm really excited. You know, a lot of the UI improvements and the options that we've created for Dragon Spear are going to be really big deals. Like when we show you the AI later, when we show you the difficulty slider, those are huge improvements. But we've also made tons of little adjustments, like the InfraVision mm -hmm. uh, switching off in light, that just make it such a cohesive experience that really help with the immersion. Like, of course, you wouldn't need your InfraVision if somebody's standing in broad daylight. And uh, I'm very, very excited for people to be able to play it and see our team's exceptional hard work. Earlier, I was going to say something about, you know, we're working around the clock to get Dragon Spear ready for release, but we're not actually uh, because Trent doesn't let us do crunch time, but we're working as much as he will let us. So secretly after work, I go home and I do a bunch more work, but officially no crunch time. <laughs> I think a bunch of people were here till like eight last night. You call that Me and Andrew, we were doing a, a recording session with uh, EK Amadi. I mentioned it on Twitter. He's really, really awesome. He was, uh, I believe, in Halo 5. He was a really, really great voice actor. Cool. And uh, we had him read through a bunch of lines last night, and it was a complete blast. Excellent. So uh, Thunderflux says, am I the only one tempted to cast Fireball into the crowd? I, I do it all the time. All the time. I think I can safely say you're not. It's so fun. It's always murder with you, Phil. But when you can kill like dozens of people at once, is it still really murder? I argue that it's statistics. <laughs> uh, Slayer0231 asked, will any of Saravok's equipment make an appearance? Sort of. Yes, indeed, yeah. it There's will. There's actually a very small quest um, that starts at the beginning of the game and then ends uh, sort of in the first third of the game. Well, technically, that has that to do with something Saravok did uh, that you don't know about in Baldur's Gate. So, yeah, there's definitely tie-ins to Saravok's legacy. Technically, that quest wraps up in Baldur's Gate 2 if you really want to get, you know, technical about it. I don't. All right, well, whatever. <laughs> So, uh, uh, Deanman23 asks, will any of the new characters follow over into Baldur's Gate 2? Not yet. Uh, depending on how much interest we have in them, like with the kind of reaction right, that we get, get for the new characters, we might be able to do uh, some sort of a patch or extra content for them in Baldur's mm -hmm, Gate yeah. 2 Enhanced Edition. But right now, it's not on the table. If, if everybody's screaming out for, you know, hey, we want Glint in BG2, he's awesome, I want to see him interact with Jan, then yeah, obviously, we, we'd love to add it. So mm -hmm. we're, we're pretty much just reading the Oh, Sorcerer base. Sundries. Yeah. Uh, Sorcerer Sundries as well, extremely busy with the refugee crisis sort of rocking the city. A lot of people want equipment to keep them safe or to keep refuse at bay. Mm -hmm. You should talk to Hal Bowser first. Uh, this was a sub-quest I wrote, so I'm pretty proud of it. Is there anything I can do to help? You're such a nice guy, Phil. So those of you who are familiar, of course, with Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition may suspect what this quest entails when you go upstairs in Sorcerer Sundries. If you don't want a subquest spoiler, close your eyes for like two minutes. But it's, it doesn't have anything to do with the main plot. Also, plug your ears because I'm going to I'm going to describe it. <laughs> oh. So no. Hal Bazer wants you to go get some potion bottles for him. That seems like something the hero of Baldur's Gate would do. You got a little little key. Ooh. Some potions. Ah, there it is. Empty bottle case. All right. Uh oh. Wait a minute. What's happening? All right. So we're uh, in the middle of a robbery here, and uh, robbery in progress. Hmm, perhaps we could work together. <laughs> oh. oh ooh, <laughs> uh, what difficulty are we on? Because I have a really bad feeling about this. I'm not sure, actually. Well, we'll find out. Try pausing it and checking your difficulty. Whoa, what's that? Whoa. 
The new pause screen uh, grayscales by default. And again, this is something that you can toggle. But now when you pause, it looks a little bit like time stop, but the sprites are still colored. And you can see the, the highlights going on there. So it makes it a lot easier to see the battle, which is what's really important when you're paused. You don't care so much about the scenery. You care about the position, what people are doing, et cetera, et cetera. So that's something that we added. Could try just running away. I could try running away. Let's do that. Let's come back later. Ow. All right. <laughs> well, there was a giant spider there. Did we add... Uh, let's see if we can mention it. Yeah, I brought the uh, potion bottles. Oh, we didn't actually thwart it yet. <laughs> well, there's a bug in there for that one. Well, they didn't get to steal those empty potion bottles. That's true. They didn't get to steal <laughs> the worthless bits. But uh, the way that quest is supposed to work is that you can actually tell him, and then there's a bit more to the quest if you run away in the middle of battle. Mm -hmm. So we are. Like I said, we're still updating it. We're showing you the most recent build that's still under development because yeah. we really wanted to show off these new features. Now, to clarify, like all this stuff is written, it's scripted, and everything. We're just merging things in. Uh, Fab911 asked, what are the prizes today? So we'll be giving away another t-shirt in a little bit. And then at the end of the stream, oh, this is a one-hour stream, uh, we'll have a special bonus prize. What could it be? It's a mystery. Uh, Gloomfrost. Amber, please. Any new kits other than Shaman? No. Sorry. <laughs> but no, we don't have any other new kits right now. Um, Do we? Priest of Tempest go? No, it didn't. I don't think so. Uh, the Adul have the new improved Baldur's Gate maps, for example, the new ground textures, been backported to the Baldur's Gate 1 part of the game, or are they only for Dragon Spear? I think they're only for Dragon Spear. I don't think we did any art updates to Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. No, so um, that's one of the things that we specifically wanted to do is all of these areas are ripped from BG1, but they're massively updated. But because we did so much work on them, we couldn't really do that for the entire city. Um, we would love to, but we don't have 70 people and infinite man hours. If we did, huh, you can't believe what we would do. Uh, which brings us to our next uh, viewer question. Uh, Shadow Mark Returns asked, can we ride a horse yet? Now, here's an interesting bit of trivia. When we did some research uh, for Dragons, when we were developing Dragon Spear, we read a whole bunch of second edition manuals, and someone actually found a reference into a book saying that Baldur's Gate doesn't allow horses, horse riding in the streets. Like, there's a law against riding your horse around in Baldur's Gate. And uh, so we're like, ah, oh, that would explain why you can't uh, ride horses in the game. Um, but actually, no, we just don't have the ability to, to do mounts yet. So, sorry. But you can tell yourself that's the in-game reason. The truth is that the iron crisis affected more than just iron. It also attacked the bones of horses. So before the beginning of Baldur's Gate, there were actually a lot of horses running around. But then the iron crisis hit, and you'd be riding along, and all of a sudden the bones would just shatter, and it would turn into this like jiggling mass of horse. And we didn't really want to show that because the BG engine doesn't do physics very well. So no horses. They were going to call it the horse bone crisis, but the iron crisis just had more of a ring to it. Uh, Eduardo Adeo asked, will you please tell what happened with Kevan? Uh, so I can't remember off the top of my head what his storyline is in Dragon Spear, but he is one of the companions that won't continue with you past the opening sort of prologue. The way we structured it is that we couldn't have all the companions from Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition in Siege of Dragon Spear. There just wasn't enough room and enough time to, uh, you know, script all of their, their dialogues and everything like that. So we went with a smaller group of companions that are available in Siege of Dragon Spear. It is an expansion. However, we didn't want the player to just suddenly have all their companions abandon them for no reason. So there's a prologue section where your companions travel with you. And then at the end, they have a little dialogue where they tell you, you know, sorry, I'm going off to, um, you know, track down my long lost brother or whatever their excuse is and say goodbye to you. And then they leave and you can't find them again until you can in Baldur's Gate 2 if they were available mm -hmm. there. So we, we brought it back as many people as we could manage, um, and we brought back a lot of people. The voice list for the voice cast for this game is pretty ridiculous, um, but I think people are going to be really, really happy with what we've put together. Mm -hmm. So I got these spectacles from Ooh. this guy named Zabiak. 
Sounds pretty cool. Pull an extra planar creature into the prime. Three charges. That sounds totally safe. Neat. Whoa. Ooh. Speak of the devil. <laughs> That's a kind of a joke because it's extra planar creatures, which include devils. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could. You can't get comedy like this anywhere, folks. Anywhere else, I mean. We could use the spectacles on this thing and bring him into the prime, but we're going to be teases and not do that. Ooh, I wonder what would happen if you did. I guess people will find out in a few short weeks. In a few short weeks, indeed. Out, out. Get out, you vile poxy snake. A weasel <laughs> and a snake. That doesn't make sense. Hey, it's Koran. I love that guy. Uh, get away, get away. No. <laughs> you got me. You don't recognize me, do you? It is I, indeed. <laughs> I just I, I, I just look like her. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get out of here, you vile poxy snake. Oop, there's a bug. All right, so I believe Safana was hanging out around here somewhere. Oh, hey. Uh, John Irenicus again asked, do we get more Montron and Zar? Only in the prelude, I'm afraid. Sorry. Hmm. Uh, and Gloomfrost asked, what do you call the engine now that it's been modified so much? I um, mean, we're, we still call it the Infinity Engine. Internally, sometimes we call it like Infinity Plus Plus because we have indeed rewritten the majority of the engine now. And I'm not exaggerating at all. Most of the code in the current Infinity Engine is new. Um, and there's, there's a whole bunch of different systems in there now for all sorts of things, but we had to rewrite a significant portion of the engine. Uh, aw, Heavy Line says, guys, being a huge fan of Baldur's Gate since 2000 and seeing what you've done, I can't appreciate this enough. I love you, Beam Dog. Aw, we Thank love you, you too. Love you but too. in like a friend way, Random citizen. I don't, I don't want to get into a whole thing about like, what does love actually mean? We don't have any romances enabled for our fans, so. Let's take Safana with us. Yeah, do it. You might actually find some other, you know, like dangerous things in the city of Baldur's Gate, so. Personal sacrifice isn't really All right. Style. Two I sisters on the road. Let's do it. So you probably won't believe this, Phil, because I can tell how much fun you're having. But mm. we're actually halfway through the stream already. Really? Yes. Let's do another four hours. Let's do four hours? I mean, I'm fine We're going to need that. some more shirts. <laughs> so shall we give away another T-shirt, and then we can show off some um, of the difficulties? Sure. Thanks. While you give away the t-shirt, I will uh, show people what happened to the old Iron Throne building. So, as we mentioned earlier in the stream, if you'd like to win a t-shirt, it's a large, then uh, type exclamation mark prize. So, exclamation mark prize. Yeah, exclamation mark prize. And you will be entered automatically in a draw to win this beautiful t-shirt. It says Siege of Dragonspear on the back. You can only get these by winning them, so be sure and type exclamation mark prize. And then you can watch Phil wander around in the Iron Throne building, which has been converted into a sort of a rooming house for refugees. Yeah, they're basically like a school gymnasium got converted to uh, house these people because they have nowhere else to go. But unfortunately, it's full up already, and there are yet more refugees outside the front door who want in. Hey, there's Rasad. Certainly. Hey, Rasad. What's cracking, buddy? Hey, that's me. That's my head. <laughs> it is your head. Is A little shinier you than know yours, me, Monk? but. There are few in this city who don't know the indeed. Kalar tried to kill me this morning. Ooh, that's a bit of a spoiler. I don't know if we uh, sh talked about that yet. Pretend you didn't hear that. Believe me. Allergoth. Hey, I know that guy. He shows up in Baldur's Gate too. Mm. It's dishes. almost like we've tried to tie different storylines together with this expansion. So, uh, the t-shirt draw has been completed, and the winner is... Heavy Line! Congratulations, Heavy Line! Hey, isn't that the person who said that they loved Beamdog? That's a total coincidence. You do not actually get a better chance of winning if you say how much you like us. totally do. So, congratulations, Heavy Line. Private message the Beamdog people in the, uh, the Beamdog account in the Twitch channel. And we'll get you set up with a way to claim your prize. Congratulations. Yes, certainly. Uh, Hakaluka Muka Puka so asks, what is this friends, thing called love? But we should head back so love is a chemical 
scenario in your brain where a bunch of neurons associated with a particular person get used in a certain way that results in chemicals that make you feel a certain emotion for them. And I'm explaining this very, very poorly. But basically, love is a lie and you are a biological robot. Love is everything. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Let's sing the W. Uh, the, the song. Can't remember the name. <laughs> why? Do you, why do you want to sing that song so much? Know, it's, it's you me. just want us to get sued by like everyone possible. That guy just got thrown out of the flaming fist. Did you see that? Oh my gosh. He was hurled. Oh, Savannah's hanging out with a horse again. Sweetie. Notice no one is riding it. That's illegal. Uh, we've had a couple questions about how our yeah, pricing, yeah. Infor like how the different um, platforms give money to Beamdog. So, like, do you make do we make more money if you buy it on Steam or whatever? Honestly, I'm not sure. Like, I'd love to answer the question live. Um, I think we make more through the Beamdog website, but we I don't have like inside information really we into we our pricing like agreements. We so. do make more money off of Beamdog, however. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy it on Steam. Yeah, my recommendation is, you know what, buy it on the platform that you're going to use it on. Yeah. Like, we will be fine. We appreciate your interest, but in the end, just buy whatever platform you're more comfortable with. We'll get money somehow. Do you know what I like about you? Thank you. Thank you for something. caring. So here we are at the oh, Flaming Fist headquarters. I believe we're heading in to meet a companion of ours from the past. His name starts with T, ends with an X. Hmm. Ticks, Tanics? tax. I don't know. Anyways, Tanics. let's load a different save. <laughs> you don't get to see him until March 31st. Okay, so Ijitsu Master said, Sweet, we need a karaoke beam dog stream. So, this is Phil's favorite song, apparently. I sang it this morning. It was a big mistake. He won't let me stop now. It's stuck in your head. Baby, if you ever wonder, wonder whatever became of me. I'm living on the air in Cincinnati, Cincinnati WKRP. Congratulations, you just heard me sing the WKRP song. Only the freshest pop culture references at Beamdog. <laughs> <laughs> I think like the average age of our like customer is like 65 or something, so. That's fair. Probably they all remember. All right, so Phil's going to show you something really cool now. So pay attention if you want to see something amazing. So uh, regarding the difficulty levels of the game, um, not only does it increase the uh, stats of the enemies that you face uh, and increases the damage that you take, it changes the composition of the enemies that you'll encounter. So on a lower difficulty setting, for example, if I were to go into the room I'm about to enter, I would probably encounter you know, four skeletons and one tattered skeleton. But if I were to crank the difficulty up to say core rules, I would have three skeletons, two tattered skeletons, three skeleton archers, two armored skeletons, and a shadowed soul. So the combat encounters become vastly more difficult. And as well, the tactics that you have to use to beat them change dramatically. So on lower difficulty settings, you can just plug up the entryway, let your frontline melee fighters handle it, and then pick them off from range. But at higher difficulty levels, the enemies will not only have different composition, but they'll also use different strategies against you. They're going to target your mages and clerics in the back. They're going to go after the guys that are supporting the melee fighters. Lightly armored foes mm -hmm. as opposed to ones in heavy plate mail. So on a lower difficulty setting, an archer might just shoot whoever's in the front. So if you've got like Minsk and his big heavy plate armor, he gets hit with an arrow, big deal. But on the higher levels... Uh, yeah. of difficulty they may shoot all the way to the back where your mages are standing because so here you can see this encounter you know four guy or five guys fairly reasonable fight we could probably beat these guys pretty pretty quickly yeah they're just we're, they're we're just walking easy. after you yeah. yeah they don't even care they're just mindless so we can just nuke these guys no problem dead dead Always with the murder. Dead. Always with the murder. Just quite. There, yeah, there that was a really murder if they're skeletons. It is. You can be murdered twice. <laughs> <laughs> so that was easy. And I mean, obviously, that was very, very easy. Let's uh, load that save again, but we'll crank the difficulty way, way up. Insane. Let's give this a shot. I can't wait to see what happens. We've reached the cap. If you need some advice on dealing it with undead. 
the floor. Oh, I bet we're going to win. B D H seventy seven. Who said I have a nice voice? Oh, I see how it is. You didn't sing. <laughs> you made me do it. That's true. Not like I mind. I, the All the right. beam bard is not like a title that I take lightly. It will be done. Although it's not on my business cards. Uh oh. Sure uh oh. Whoa. Yeah, this is going to be a bit tougher. Okay, so we're going to plug up the entryway here. And we'll get Dinah here to throw in a... Uh, that's roughly where we want it. Safana is going to be in the back, picking the guys off with her range. And we will switch Khalid to... Uh, actually, who do I have in the front here? Yeah, these guys are fine. And uh, another thing here is not only do we have a different composition. So Phil mentioned, you know, we've got more archers. We've got these big uh -huh, bladed fan. skeletons right. and so forth. But we've got the shattered spirits or shadowed spirits that can heal. So they're healing their own side while you're fighting them. And anyone who's played as much Warcraft as I have in Battlegrounds knows that healers are horrible and you should kill them first. Uh, and we've got skeletal mages here who can haste the group. So their tactics are changing, their resources are increasing, and you are in a lot of trouble. I'm going to die. So Phil, maybe there's something you can do to stop yourself from dying. I could quit and reload. You could pause it and reduce your difficulty level. But that's lame. So if you reduce your difficulty level mid-battle, it will actually take bad guys off the field. Yeah. Well, it's Boom. there they go. Boom. It does not work the other way. If you increase the difficulty level in a battle, you won't get multiple en enemies spawning. Yeah, you can. We, we had to make a bunch of decisions around that so that you can't farm XP in weird ways and that yeah. sort of thing. Speaking of XP, there have been a lot of questions. Uh, I think... Uh, somebody asked, but it's gone now, about how the XP cap works here. Are you going to play Dragon Spear and then enter Baldur's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition and find yourself at too high a level? Uh, no, so we put in a lot of work into the XP cap. I think it's, uh, I can't remember what it is, but you can get up to around level 10. Don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm remembering from, from mm -hmm. months ago. But basically, the cap is slightly higher. And BG2 actually scales properly anyways. So if you start a Renicus's dungeon one or two levels higher than you would normally be, you're not actually going to notice that much of a gameplay difference because the game will react properly to that. Um, we've done a lot of testing, and it works out fine, honestly. Um, so it, it doesn't seem like it's an issue. From that all, was 00Zim00 zero zero zim zero zero who asked that. Thanks for participating in our chat. So that was an example of how battles can change. Now that was just a very straightforward fight with a bunch of undead creatures. They're pretty dumb, you know, they don't do a lot of stuff. But you can see how later in the game when you get into more complex scenarios with, you know, humanoid enemies that have a lot of abilities, that increased difficulty is going to be an absolute blast to play. There's so many small aspects to this increased difficulty system. Like the team has worked so hard on this and done so many great things. Um, humanoid enemies, for example, they will follow the rules of a PC. So you're not going to get fight an orc or something who has a humanoid monster class who can drink two potions at once or uh, something else that you as a player couldn't do. And mindless undead who have no intelligence score don't change their tactics. Why would they? They're mindless. So there's all these little tiny aspects to it that really makes the game reactive and is going to be kind of amazing. Also, Phil, can you show um, back in the options screen the no difficulty, no damage increase on difficulty? Right. Um, so I'll, I'll just describe it. But basically, you can crank the difficulty up to Insane or Legacy of Ball, which is the new extreme difficulty level. But you can disable the damage increases that monsters will, will have. So part of the way that the difficulty scales up is that monsters just do more damage, but it's not really based on their stats. So you can disable that so you get more monsters that are using more abilities, but they have the exact same damage output as you would. So mm -hmm. it's, it's fair, but if you want that extra challenge, you can turn on the additional damage. Like almost all of the options that we've created, it's toggleable, so yeah. you can change it on or off. Another really, really cool feature um, that's in Siege of Dragon Spear is the customizable um, AI scripts. So if you recall from the original games, you could give any of your companions a little AI script that they would follow, but it was pretty much just a paragraph of text that vaguely described what they did, and it was kind of monolithic, right? And we left them there for people yeah, who like them. If you, if you have 
if you enjoy these scripts, you can still use them. But the new feature we have are, is the ability to individually control behaviors. So I have Safana here, and I can customize her AI so that she will attack enemies, but she prefers ranged weapons. She won't use items, but she will use special abilities, and so on and so on. So it's incredibly powerful, and you can customize characters in really, really cool ways. We're really, really happy about this. It's one of the uh, new details that I think people are really going to appreciate. Very excited to see what modders are going to do with Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Dragon Spear. Last year at the uh, Dragon Spear Announce event, Cameron showed off the ability to modify your user interface. And that's another really, really cool thing that you're going to see great mods coming from. You just, uh, when, when it's enabled in your settings, you hit F11 and you can start adjusting the layout of screens and that sort of thing. So it's really, really cool. Very exciting. I'm dying horribly here, yeah. so uh, I think it's time to load our next save. Yeah, why don't we head out and check out some wilderness areas? I know there was a question at one point about how many wilderness areas we have. Several? I don't, yeah, several. I don't remember the exact count. Um, but Salt. there's. we started out with a couple of wilderness areas because they're a staple of Baldur's Gate. Uh, there's in there's at least seven. Yeah. And then we added even more after our initial pass on the game because uh, I'd mentioned in one of the streams that some of our playtest feedback was that the game felt a little too linear and challenged, channeled, and so we added some uh, some new areas. And uh, just like in the original Baldur's Gate, uh, we've got random people sort of wandering around uh, in the wilderness, so you can occasionally meet someone who's just there to say hi, or maybe give you a little information about what's happening in the world. Uh, ah, we didn't save him, he's dead. <laughs> well, we tried. We tried to save him. Chunks are still uh, in the game. When people die, they explode into a bunch of meaty bits. Hey, it's McKim. Duskmoor asked, will there be a lot of changes to Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition with the Siege of Dragon Spear Enhancement and the patch that comes out? The only changes are user interface enhancements or additional abilities that we've added in Siege. The content of Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition will not change. That's correct. Um, uh, w if you get a chance in this wilderness area, Phil, take a look at the uh, McKinn's Shaman spells too and see if there's a new spell or two you can cast. Just so our viewers can take a look. Oh, she's out of spells right now. Charm person or mammal? Huh. That's oddly specific. Ah, uh, second clarity. edition. We had a little powwow before the stream started, uh, and Phil asked if infravision was still the right term to use. And it is if you're talking about second edition, though it was. They had infravision and they also had ultravision, which I think some creatures had. And then in later, um, later editions, it was changed to low light vision or dark vision. But we still call it Infravision because second edition rules. So we're old school that way. Hey, leave that deer alone. Hey, uh, the wolf's chasing a deer. All right. We'll leave him alone. Let nature take its course. The no, we, we don't have any ranger. Oh, wait, Minsk is a ranger. He would care. No, actually, he would let nature take its course. <laughs> uh. What's the difference between easy and story mode, Phil? Do you know if they're, the, they're different? John Irenicus with a one. Is so easy mode is what it was in the classic games. You take less damage. Your hit point rolls are all maximized. Spells will always copy to your, your spell book and everything. But you still take damage in combat, and you can still die. Story mode means that you your party is invincible. Story mode is for people who want to play the game and experience the story, but they don't particularly care for the tactical combat. And so that was added alongside with Legacy of Ball because we had a lot of requests on both ends of the spectrum. There were a lot of people who were like, I love the experience of BG, but I just I can't wrap my head around the combat. Mm -hmm. And then we gave them story mode and they loved it. They were they rocked through BG one, played through BG two, played through Icewind, they were having an absolute blast. And so we were really, really happy to add that. And on the other end of the spectrum, we've added Legacy of Ball mode, which is for the hardcore players who are like insane. Pff, I can handle that in my sleep. So Legacy of Ball jacks up the stats, the difficulty, everything about the game. Um, one of our testers was playing Baldur's Gate 1 with Legacy of Ball mode enabled, and he got his ass kicked by the rats in Candlekeep, <laughs> which I found hilarious. And then was killed by a disease gibberling. Yeah, he was after. killed by a disease. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here, and uh, we'll be back in just a couple minutes with some more Siege of Dragonspear streaming goodness. 
And we're back. And that was the last time an Etten messed with the Good Times gang. <laughs> good Times gang. Oh, my gosh. That's uh, McKinn with a bunch of her spirits. We're going to abandon them. Zoop, zoop, zoop. They're all gone. All right. If you're just joining us, we're on uh, our Twitch today demoing Siege of Dragon Spear. This is our latest demo build that our amazing team put together for us. Uh, it's a it may have a few issues because we did build it just now for the for the stream, but it also has all the new features that we're very mm -hmm. excited about, and so we're going to be showing off some of those features. So and I want already. I want to show a feature that was actually in the original Baldur's Gate, but very very few people knew about it. If you right-click on your formation icons, it gives you access to a bunch of other ones. Mm -hmm. And that right there, a lot of people didn't know about it. But the main thing I wanted to show you is the first one here, which is it's, it's follow the leader mode. So when you've got that enabled and you have the entire party selected, if you click, the one guy goes, and then they all sort of follow in line. And it's really, really neat. It's useless for combat because you want a formation. But when you're just wandering around the city, it's a lot of fun to see your guys sort of walking in single file, hanging out. We'll definitely explore more of this map, Phil, because I feel like there's a lot of interesting stuff here. Well, where are we on the take. map right now? Mm. Oh, no, let's see. Where's the walkable area? There it oh, is. Oh, th that shows you where you can walk. Yeah. Uh. By the way, there's a new map screen. So this is still... Uh, I don't know if any feature that we've gone over has invited more debate and discourse yeah. with internally than that map feature. We care a lot about the user interface of this game, probably well, to a fault. I mean, the people who work here, we're gamers who love Baldur's Gate. And uh, so obviously there are a lot of strong opinions on what features are you know, good the way they are, which should be changed, and updated. So there's definitely a lot of process. We try and listen to you know, everyone's opinions before we make big changes. Uh-oh. Donnie here's in trouble. Are you murdering again, Phil? Uh, it's not murder if it's <laughs> self-defense, although Rasad might... Uh, Die here. There we go. So we got that going on. He's taking care of him. Mellow Cow asks, so by the way, is Nuber coming back in Dragon Spear? Um, sort of. Maybe. So, well, not really. Okay, Nuber himself will not appear in Seed of Dragon Spear, but in the grand tradition of Nuber, <laughs> there will be uh, something for, for fans to enjoy. Um, so going back to this map screen here. We were, as Amber was saying, we had a lot of debate about this, and there's still some work to go in, but the new map screen zooms out to show you where you, what you're looking at. And you can also toggle this little feature that shows you what the walkable area of the map is. So you can see up here in the corner, it fades off on the edge, so you know, okay, I haven't fully explored this map yet. And that's an issue that the Baldur's Gate games have always had, which is it's often very difficult to see where can I actually go? What part of the map is, is actually something important? Mm -hmm. And with the ground highlight, it makes it trivial, trivially, trivially easy to see. Um, P.S. Pia Silk says, uh, no, seriously, what have you done to character monster sprites? So, Phil, do you want to go over the optional character highlighting feature just one more time? Okay, so I'm going to, well, I can't really do it right now. But first off, if you look very, very closely when we're at max zoom, there's a bit of a black outline around the sprite. This is an option that you can enable or disable, but it makes it incredibly easy to pick out sprites from the background, regardless of what background they're on. Another thing that we've added as a toggle is the ability to mouse over sprites and you get a bit of a highlight. Now in combat, when you're all clumped together in a big mess, this makes it very easy to see who you're actually selecting. Um, another feature that we've demoed a long time ago are health bars at the top of characters. When you mouse over a character and you get the near death, badly injured, injured, that sort of thing, the health bars correspond to that. There are five states and there are five pips in the health bar. So this is all information that the player actually already had available to them in the original game, but now you've just exposed it in an easier to see way. Mm -hmm. And again, this is something you can toggle. If you want the classic Baldur's Gate experience where it was very difficult, you can have it. We may not understand it, but we support you. I understand it. I'm, I'm a big proponent of like classic games being the way that they are. But at the same time, Baldur's Gate can be a modern game, as you can see here. It can play and Ooh, feel... Ooh, you should go into that cave. Yeah, I should. I bet, there, there. I bet there's some cool treasure in there. You must gather your party before venturing filth. 
I'm very excited. Uh, D Crunch asked, when will the Steam achievements be activated? So yeah, we're going to have Steam yeah. achievements. Yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty for, exciting. Uh, this is for BG1 and 2. Mm -hmm. Siege and will have its own achievements, but Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 are getting achievements in a patch that's dropping soon. Yeah, so when the patches come out is the plan yeah. for when achievements will be live. The patch to enable achievements is actually in testing right now. We're going through a whole round of testing, basically. Um, but you'll Phil, have look a very, down very there. Soon. Phil, look. At, there's a treasure chest down there. You should go get oh, some treasure. I bet it's not trapped at all. Wait, is it? Ah, it was a mimic. Ooh, it was a killer mimic. Now? Yeah, with uh, allied slimes and oozes. Yeah. I've always wanted to have slime friends. <laughs> He's taking it. Now remember, we're playing on easy here, so normally this would be an absolute horrible challenge for you to deal with, but because we're on easy. My character is just sort of chewing through everybody. He's Abdel. If you've ever read the Baldur's Gate novelizations, um, Abdel is the name of the main character. Uh, Biohazard asked, is Siege of Dragonspear similar in scope to Baldur's Gate 2? No, Siege of Dragonspear is an expansion to Baldur's Gate 1. So we've got about 25 plus hours of gameplay, where I think Baldur's Gate 2 is more like yeah. 50. I think the easiest way to think about Sea to Dragon Spear is it's a slightly smaller version of Throne of Ball mm. is basically what it is. It's that same sort of little expansion that adds on to the main game, but it still has a bunch of really cool, fun story and challenges to play through. It is pretty amazing. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, we have uh, pre-orders live now on SiegeOfDragonSpear.com. We also have a collector's edition that you can pre-order, which is the first collector's edition we've done. We're very excited about it. It does have limited quantities, uh, so order it as soon as you can if you want one. And it's got a whole bunch of really exciting physical bits and pieces like a dice set, an amulet, printed manuals, uh, collectible coin, and that sort of thing. So yeah, check it out on SiegeOfDragonSpear.com and pre-order if you want one of the limited collector's editions. Gold, darn it, there's more beetles. <laughs> so many beetles. Well, you guys can deal with that. Abdel is going to go hang out over here. Oh, ah, I regret everything I've ever done. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Solution take is the hit always Abdel. fireball. Damn, look at that. Do it again. Do it again, down here. Get out of there. Get out of there, Abdel. No. Oh, he's alive. Okay. <laughs> he's actually doing all right. He's panicked, though. That's a problem. These guys are just chilling. They're not going to help him. Mix it up, McKinn. Get him. Oh, he's, uh, he's frozen. MO10 Ranger asked, is Clue a console available? And fortunately, our producer told me the answer is yes, because I don't know what that is. Actually, yeah, it is. And we've actually added uh, some cool features. So we're, we wouldn't advertise it because the console isn't something that you advertise for a game. But now when you bring up the console, it will show you a list of all the areas in the game in a little window that appears. And you can select it and travel. As well, there's a button to explore the map. There's a button to give you gold. I think there's even a button to give you experience. So yes, the console is available. All of the previous functions of the console are there. In fact, there are more. And as well, there's a little cheat screen now too. I gotta tell you, Phil, I'm so excited that we're finally gonna be able to get this out to the public in less than a month. Yes. Like, this, has, uh, this has been my first job at a video game company. It's been my first product, Unroll. Uh, technically, I was here when Icewind Dale Enhanced Edition went out, but the work had pretty much already been completed by the time I joined the team. Uh, so it's it's just a really incredible experience to see something that you've worked so hard on for so long with such a great group of people to actually finally get into the public eye. So yeah, we're really excited. We're so glad you could be here to, and joining us and seeing all this uh, great stuff about the game and getting as excited as we have been these past few years. So what's going on right now? Right. You're trying to figure out what to what to do next, Phil, with your quest journal? Yeah. Mm. Maybe remember. you could search for Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, now you've okay. now you found what you're looking for. So by the way <laughs> <laughs> Um another thing we're working on is a revised journal system. So it's able to float over top of the game. So if you want to, you can keep it up while you're playing the game if you need to reference something. Uh we've added um the ability to collapse entries so it's much more legible. 
Uh, as well, you can search through your journal for keywords and it'll automatically filter for them. Phil, looks like you have some company here ah, in the wilderness. Ah, crumb. <laughs> if you don't want to be spoiled on Nuber with the umlaut dialogue. Cheese it, it's Nuber. Get out of here. Go, Quick go, run. go. <laughs> He can't catch you. You're too fast. Let's kill him. Yeah, suck it, new. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. He just keeps coming. <laughs> Even death cannot stop Nuber. Yeah, we did it. Oh, no. <laughs> now he's pissed. Oh, this has gone poorly for us. Sometimes murder is not him. the answer, Phil. Let's go. I know you don't believe me, Come but on, it's true. Uber. Yeah, we did it. I'm sad. I wish I hadn't shown that because that's the best thing to discover on your own. <laughs> oh, you're the one in charge. Oh, well. I did say if you didn't want to be spoiled by new about Nuber to leave, but then you attacked him really fast after that. So sorry if you there's, saw that. There's more to you. If you don't attack him, he talks to you, but it's it's funny. It's true. There's his original uh, quotes. Kamagurisho says Nuber is Uber, but not the car company. We don't have that in Edmonton anymore. Temporarily. Uh, <laughs> they shut it down temporarily. That's true. Uh, Sigal says, is the SOD expansion or patches going to update anything in Black Pits 1 or 2? Yes. So because Black Pits 1 and 2 are both just part of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, all of the UI and feature enhancements will go into the Black Pits. So we're not making any content changes, but all of the things like sprite highlighting and AI scripts and all that stuff will be available to you in the Black Pits. Oh, that little ca that cat was chasing a butterfly. Yeah. Uh, it's like a real cat. EAD Yankee said, well, oh, we already, oh, well, these features also come to the iOS version for BG, BG2 and Icewind Dale. Yep, Dale. they sure will. BG and BG2. Yep. And Icewind Dale? Yep. Well, the, the, the long-term plan is all of the great features that we're adding to Siege will eventually make their way to all of the Infinity Engine games. So if there's a, a, a feature that makes sense to be an iPad, then yeah, we would eventually patch that in. So the, the functionality of the engine, that's free, basically. If you own any of the Infinity Engine games, we want you to have the latest and greatest Infinity Engine experience. Mm. Thanks, EAD e yeah. Yankee, for that question. The only thing we're really selling is content. That's what we care about. So even the Shaman class, which is new to Sea to Dragon Spear, will be added to BGE and BG2, because how could you carry your Shaman over from Siege if the Shaman weren't in BG2? And the familiar issue that comes out at the end of the month I mentioned was all about Siege of Dragon Spear. We have a, a short interview with some of the developers about how the Shaman class was sort of... Um, imagined and then mm -hmm. turned into like uh, like all the balance decisions and stuff that went into it. Uh, the Adul says, man, I love that map zoom. Can you show it again? Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom. All right, that's okay, enough, we'll Phil. Stop, we'll stop. Stop it. Uh, Demon1 asked what the deluxe edition includes and what are the prices. So the deluxe edition, the base price is... Uh, well, let's let's break it down. It's nineteen ninety nine for Siege of Dragon Spear. For just Siege of Dragon Spear, it's twenty bucks. That's the expansion pack price. Yeah. For forty bucks American, you get the digital deluxe edition, which has Siege of Dragon Spear and the soundtracks for BGE and Siege of Dragon Spear. And then on top of that, there's the collector's edition, which is one hundred and thirty US. And in that, you get all sorts of great stuff that we talked about at the beginning of this. You day. can see it at uh, the website SiegeofDragonSpear.com. And because this is like our first physical product, I think we are doing a limited run. So get your orders in now if you want it. Trent, am I saying it enough? <laughs> yeah. it's got a big, that. got a big whiteboard. <laughs> push it, push it hard. <laughs> Actually, no, but honestly, ah. the collector's edition is amazing. Like I'm so, so proud of this amazing edition. It's got a dice set. It's got physical printed manuals. I think somebody had asked at one point if you get PDF copies. I think the PDF copies will be going with the digital editions of Dragon Spear. I'm not really sure how that's working yet, but I'll look um, into it and I can talk about it on the forums. Sorry, I wasn't listening to this question. If we're going to have PDF versions of the manuals that go out with the digital copies of Siege oh, of yeah. Dragon Spear. Oh yeah, all of the manuals, there will be PDF versions. We'll have them on the website. So if you buy the collector's edition, which is a box set, it's got the manuals, the Dragon Spear amulet, the dice bag, the game discs, the soundtrack discs, uh, the collectible coin, uh, the leather bound field report, or leather like bound field report, then that will ship when it's ready from the factory, which will be a few months. 
But on the 31st, when the game launches, you will get your digital copies of Dragon Spear, Baldur's Gate, Enhanced Edition. Well, you get Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition right away. Yeah. And um, the soundtracks in MP3 and FLAC format. So all that stuff will come on the 31st, and then you just have to wait for the actual physical copy to ship. I hope that made sense. It did make sense to me, but then I'm super smart. Please don't fire me. I like this job. It's okay. I like my coworkers. It's okay. You guys are a pretty great I team. I guess. Um, House Devil, speaking, uh, um, speaking of teams, House Devere, sorry, says, how large was the original Baldur's Gate team and how big are you now? The original, like back at Bioware, the original BG team was like three times the size of our team. For Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition back in 2011, I think we were only like, it was 10 or fewer people were working on that. Mm -hmm. For Siege of Dragon Spear. Um, I think we're up to about 40 people or so. Yeah, 30, it's, it's 30 some to 40 absurd people. number. Beamdog, the company, I think around, we're probably over 40 people now. Um, the people working on Siege varies based on where the project's at, but I'm pretty sure that, yeah, we're probably at about 40, 50 people overall that have worked on Siege. And that includes, like, contractors who've done stuff for us. Sam Hewlett, the music composer of Mass Effect and mm. Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition, he's included in that as well. So in terms of size, I would say that we're probably still about half the size of the team that worked on, say, Throne of Ball. But uh, we have managed to accomplish an extraordinary amount of stuff. Making a new Baldur's Gate game in 2016 is ridiculously difficult, um, and especially difficult for us given the size of our team. So we've had to really take our time doing this, but... Oh, don't talk to them. Let's save that for okay, a special. We'll save that later. For those of you who uh, frequent uh, the Baldur's Gate subreddit on Reddit, there was a, a guy who posted not too long ago about how he's been telling his kids the story of Baldur's Gate as a bedtime story, like every night he tells them a little bit more. And they, they absolutely loved it, and they had drawn him a bunch of pictures of like their characters or whatever. And we were just tickled pink by that. We thought it was adorable. So as an Easter egg in the game, you'll be able to find the little characters that those kids had created. And they have something special to say. Yeah, they have, and they give you an item, too. Mm -hmm. It may not be useful, but it's an item. It's useful. Everything's useful. Here they are. Ah, no. Here they are. I was so excited about this part. Displacer beasts. These are indeed displacer beasts. So Have displacer these been seen beasts. before in any Infinity Engine game? No. Imagine a cat that could phase through reality and also has tentacles on its back. That's very easy to imagine. Um, Pia Silk said, so to play this, I need to own Baldur's Gate 1 Enhanced Edition in the first place? Yes, that is true. Yeah. This is an expansion to Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. So an old school expansion pack, you get the base game, and then you get Siege on top of it. Although, that. just like Throne of Ball, once it's installed, you can choose to start a new game from the Siege of Dragon Spear position. Yeah. yeah, you can... There's a lot of ways to get into Siege of Dragon Spear. You can either start a new character at the beginning of Siege of Dragon Spear. You can import a single character from Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition or any other compatible game. Or you can import your save from Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. When you beat the game, it generates a save, and you can take that one and import it into SOD. And then your whole party from that game will be carried over. Uh, or you can import a save from earlier in the game. It doesn't have to be a save from the end of BGE. Or you can make a tabletop game and use your new Dragon Sphere Collector's Edition dice. Booyah! And then you can do whatever you want. There you go. Um... I was going to say something. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, hey, Phil, as a piece of trivia, I just said that that was the first time Displacer Beast showed up in an Infinity Engine game, but I was wrong. Do you remember the other time when Displacer Beast showed up in an Infinity Engine game? In Icewind Dale, uh, in the town I don't even know why I of, uh, what's the first East town Haven. called? East Haven. Uh, when you go into What's-His-Face's house, he's got all of his trophies from years of adventuring, and on the That's ground correct. is the pelt of a displacer beast. That's correct. That's what I was thinking of. Look how you far win. you can zoom out. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Man, when That's you play incredible. this game in 4K, it's ridiculous. You could actually have the entire map visible at once. And it's like playing as some sort of military general <laughs> who only has six dudes. Uh, Phil, here's a question for you. EAD Yankee again asked, what was it like working with Jim Cummings? He is hilarious. He is super, super funny. I didn't get um, to go. I'm not going to tell the whole story about why, but because of him, we're probably going to be sued by Disney. <laughs> um, but it, it, was, it was a complete blast. So when, when we got into the booth, he was like, oh, do I, I 
Minsk. I'm not sure if I remember this guy. So we played him some some of the original source material, and inside of about like two minutes, he was back into the groove of things, and he was cracking jokes to himself and taboo, completely unbidden. So th this guy is incredibly good at, at getting into character, staying in character, and ad-libbing. If I could only work with Jim Cummings for the rest of my life, I would seriously consider it. Although after working with E.K. Amati yesterday, maybe that's the wrong choice. All, uh, all the guys were a lot of fun. Yeah, it's true. We had a really great experience with our voice actors. I, I regret that we can't, you know, release these because Wizards and ostensibly Beam Dog are family companies. But there were some really funny cuss-filled outtakes. Salty uh, outtakes yeah. that were humorous. One one day, maybe if I if I get fired, I'll secretly release the the line of Khalid saying, M "Mind your own effing business." Maybe if someone finds you at GDC and gets you drunk, there you go. Then you can tell humorous stories. If you stories ply about me it. with alcohol at GDC, I will try and dig out some funny outtakes for you. Um, zero zero zim zero zero asked, "Does Boo get a wife in Dragon Spear?" Now he tries. He tries. I know real that this hard. is like a humorous question, but. It's funny because we actually do have a banter that has to do with Boo finding a mate, and so you'll have to watch for that in the uh, in the game. Yeah, get Safana and Minsk in your party, and there's some funny stuff going um, on. Our quest is vain. Asked, is the Displacer Beast corpse still displaced? And I don't. I think they lose their displacement on death. Yeah, they're, uh, they're still there. I remember that we looked in the monster manual to get like the one was called the Displacer Beast Pack Lord, and that's from like the second ed monster manual. It's like a variant Displacer Beast. So we did our research on it. Whatever it said in the book probably is what happened to their corpse. Well, at this point, we're just sort of wandering around the wilderness, uh, murdering things randomly. Uh, Wonder Boy twenty four oh two said, "I always wondered why no one in real life created a business selling stuffed fantasy heads for wall mounts." So like stuffed unicorn heads, stuffed like dragon head, that kind of a thing. Because unicorns are incredibly rare. Like, how often do you see a unicorn? And how often can you get a license to hunt a unicorn? It would be incredibly expensive. Nerds don't have that kind of money. <laughs> and if they did, they'd be buying our collector's edition. Right? Like, if you have enough money to afford the head of a unicorn, why wouldn't you just pay to ride a unicorn around? <laughs> this is this is deep philosophical I'm questions we ask questions. and answer here on the Stream Dog. All right, I'm going to go back to an earlier save here because we're just sort of wandering around the Kay. wilderness here. Yeah, go hang out in Baldur's Gate a bit more. Um, I think we'll be wrapping up fairly soon. But uh, Terry Toon says, by the way, is the Shaman class race alignment locked? I can't remember if it's alignment locked, but race, I believe, is human, half-elf, half-orc. Yeah, I don't think you can do chaotic evil, and there might be a couple other restrictions like lawful good, but uh, it's pretty wide open. Um we, we knew from, from way back in the day in the first BG that it's really, really irritating to have class restrictions that don't really make a lot of sense to the player. There's lore reasons, but the lore reasons aren't really explained that, that often. So we fell on the side of let's make this as accessible to as many races and alignments as we can so that you can make the character that you want to make rather than one that's sort of arbitrarily handicapped by lore rules. Mm -hmm. Uh... We have one more giveaway with a very special item in just a minute here. But first, uh, Moten Ranger said, what are your future plans for Infinity Engine games? So we've always had a policy of not talking about what we've got in development, just because sometimes projects get canceled for internal or external reasons. And also, we just want to control the information that goes out once we started working on yeah. uh, different games. So I can't really comment on that right now, but we're very happy with what we did with Seized of Dragon Spear. We're looking forward to its release on the 31st, and we hope to continue to bring you more excellent, amazing games. Speaking in more general terms, so Amber's right in that we're not going to discuss any future game projects that we might have, but in general, our plan for the Infinity Engine is to make sure that every single game has a consistent feature set where it makes sense. So if Baldur's Gate has, has something and it makes sense for it to be an Icewind Dale, it should be an Icewind Dale. And our, our overall goal is to leave the Infinity Engine games in an excellent state before we move on to do something else in the future. So if we ever were to move on to a new engine, we would be leaving the Infinity Engine in a very, very excellent condition that you'd be able to enjoy for the next 20 years. Thanks for clearing Going that up, Phil. Uh, That's nice. Makes us feel like you know we're really taking care of this this game system. I mean, we're still patching a game that's 20 years old. So. <laughs> that's true. How many companies can say that? When was the last time you saw a new patch for Quake 1? 
Uh, there was a question about if the Beamdog release also provides Steam keys. If you buy a game on Beamdog.com and later you want uh, a copy for Steam, you can email support at Beamdog.com to really uh, request a Steam key. Oh, this is this is a thing. This is a thing that's happening. Do you want to show this, Phil, or? Mm, we'll let this uh, progress on its let own. Let this guy play out. Throw it away as garbage. <laughs> All right, well, you guys have fun. <laughs> can, Go uh, away, Giselle23 says, can you release some tidbits about the Shining Lady? So what you know at the beginning of the game is that there's a crusade that's massing in the north of uh, the Sword Coast, and it's led by a mysterious figure named Kalar Argent, but her followers call her the Shining Lady. And some people say that she's... Uh, got some sort of a divine backing like some god or gods are granting her powers to kind of mobilize this crusade but if that's true and what her goals are remains unknown and even as early as in the Baldur's Gate scenes w did you just murder a guy in an inn? No it's fine he was sleeping. What? That's not here. true at all don't listen to him that's not No it's true if, if in the Forgotten Realms if you kill someone when they're asleep it's not illegal that's not true at all. You're just making that up. Anyway, yeah, but it's true to me. There's at least one subquest in the city of Baldur's Gate that lets you learn a little bit more about the Shining Lady before you kind of embark on your journey north. And you can talk <laughs> oh, to different, mad at like... Me now. <laughs> not illegal, huh, Phil? Huh? Huh? Well, now this is just self defense. What do you want? Don't murder everybody in the game, unless you really want to. Which actually is Mask a hallmark is okay of the Infinity Engine that, again, a lot of games don't do anymore. Like, it takes so much time and effort to script encounters based on how people might be dead that um, it's no wonder that most modern games don't let you just go around, like, killing innocent people. Also, probably they just don't want to encourage that kind of behavior. But we're all about, you know, freedom of choice here. Yeah. The BG games are famous for, for letting you do stuff that you wouldn't be able to do in any other game. And the price we pay for that mm -hmm. is just an absolute boatload of extra work and scripting to make it function in a reasonable way. So if you manage to do something really, really crazy and, and break the game, that's impressive. Yeah, you've done a good job. Probably like the, the first lesson I had to learn and took a long time I had to learn over and over again when I started here as a writer was not to presume that like say there's a quest where there's two people so the first quest I ever wrote was called putting down some roots and it happens in the underground river area you meet these two druids who oh actually this quest was called the good druids who are tied up in a bunch of vines and stuff and they're like help set us free and you set them free and then you talk and I had them you know interject and stuff like that so one guy would say uh, we were tied up by this evil druid and the other guy would say yeah he's a real jerk we hate him and then the first guy would say we do but that's not the point the point is that he is doing evil stuff and the second guy would say yeah but still we hate him well when that went to the scripters they would come back to me and say you have to put in contingencies for if the player kills one of these druids but not the other because if that happens the first guy will say his line it won't be able to fire the next one and the quest will break and so some quests that have multiple people in it will have five or six different variations, depending on if you killed one person, if you killed both of them, if you got the quest item and then you killed them. Like it's a lot of work going into uh, an engine where we have that much flexibility of choice. The Adul said sleep murder is fine, guys. I do it all the time. We're not condoning sleep murder or any kind of murder, actually. I am. Other than fake murder. I'm just going to come out and say it. I condone sleep murder. Well, I don't feel so bad about the things I said earlier. In and the stream this will now. bar me from any political office <laughs> in the future, but <laughs> sorry, that's how I feel. Uh, Pyrrhic One says, Will there be more stream events? Yes, we definitely plan on yeah. doing more of these. As you can tell, we're having a really good time. We love talking with you. Um, the whole, you know, frisson of having a live stream where we could just like screw up and say the wrong thing at any time. It's very like invigorating. Afterwards, I'll go run like. 10 miles and punch somebody because I'm so hyped up on stream goodness but we probably won't actually do that uh, but yeah we will do um, stream events in the yeah, future we typically do streams on Friday so between now and the 31st we'll probably do at least one or two more at the very minimum I was thinking we'd do at least one more but we also have GDC and oh, we'll be gone right, all week yeah. uh, on the whatever that is the 18th or so so if you'll be in San Francisco for GDC and you want to meet up um, just email me at amberbeamdog.com 
if I get like a hundred people, obviously I won't be able to like meet with everyone. But we will be doing Dragon Spear demos um, at the We're almost hotel. So yeah, just send me a, a send me an email. As well, we're probably going to be doing a stream of uh, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition because we have an upcoming patch, the one that's going to enable achievements. And in that patch, a lot of the features of Siege of Dragon Spear are going to be released. So before Siege is out, you will have an updated version of BGE that has a bunch of these features. Yeah, I actually wanted to do that for our last stream, but then we decided, well, Phil decided, that it was better to show off all these cool features in Dragon Spear first, and then we'll show them in Baldur's Gate Enhanced yeah. Edition after. Which is pretty exciting. So if you're just tuning in, we're just wrapping up our Siege of Dragon Spear stream. I think we're going to go for another 10 minutes or so. We're over time already, but I'm sure you guys don't mind seeing extra gameplay. And um, we've got pre-orders live now on SiegeofDragonSpear.com. You can pre-order the Vanilla Edition, the Digital Deluxe Edition, which comes with soundtracks, and the Collector's Edition, which is a physical box product. It's $129.99 US plus shipping. And it comes with physical printed manuals, dice set, amulet, um, game discs, soundtrack mm, discs, yeah. collectible coin, all that good stuff. I'm really excited about the field report. Uh, I'm, if you remember the original Baldur's Gate manuals, there's the gameplay manual, which was called Mastering Melee and Mayhem, I think. Oh, or right, Magic yeah, and Mayhem uh, or something like that something yeah something and like then that. and that was all the rules stuff so like how Thacko works and everything and then there was a second one called guide to the sword coast or something like that or the adventurer's guide to the sword coast i forget exactly but it was sort of an in-character book it had little notes from volo and it had little notes from elminster talking about the things that exist on the sword coast like all the kinds of bears there are and you know what to do if you meet a gibberling and things like that it's a gibberling or gibberling i've always said gibberling roll some dice yeah it's like gif and jif. If you say gif, you probably say gibberling. I will say gif until I die, and <laughs> I don't care if jackboot thugs come after me. The hard G is right. I'm sorry. It's not jif, and if you say jif, you're an idiot. I'm sorry. That's how it is. <laughs> you want to come and fight me? Let's do it. That's probably going to lose us more customers than any decision we've ever made yes. uh, in Baldur's Gate. I don't care what the creator of the standard said. He's wrong. He's an idiot. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Sorry for bringing that up. Um, so the field report that comes with the, there'll be a digital version that comes with Siege of Dragon Spear and then the full leather bound one with the coin insert that comes with the collector's edition is written by Ben Stunken, who is one of the Flaming Fist officers. And he basically has gone on a scouting mission to look at the area between Baldur's Gate and Dragon Spear Castle. And so he reports on the kind of monsters he sees. There's an adorable fat basilisk illustration that I want a plushie of because it's like amazing. And there's, uh, uh, you know, little sketches he does of like goblins and things he sees on the way and little side notes from Corwin and uh, the other Where Flaming Fist go? officer. I've forgotten his name because I'm on a live stream. <laughs> and uh, so it's, it's a really fun, fun book that I think people are going to enjoy seeing. Also, talking about small details, Phil's in the Flaming Fist headquarters right now. There's a couple of quests in Baldur's Gate where you can have people arrested. And if you come here later, they're actually like in the cells being mad at you. And so. you can taunt them. It's yeah. Fun. I love small touches like that. Um, somebody, Clothes Horse, asked, is Dragon Spear more combat or story slash conversation slash event focused? So it's, it's a combination of both. So in the grand tradition of Baldur's Gate games, it's got a lot of conversation, a lot of questing, a lot of events, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But as well, there are huge dungeons with, you know, tons of enemies for you to deal with. So it's Baldur's Gate with a little bit of Icewind Dale injected into it. Giselle 23 says, fireball the crowd, Phil. We know you want to. So why don't we do our last giveaway and then we can wrap it up with a giant yes. crowd fireball. What do you say? <sighs> okay. All right. So those of you who stuck with us, thank you very much. We're going to do one final giveaway for... This beautiful Siege of Dragon Spear coin, the same kind you can get in the collector's edition. So this is a heavy metal coin, not a heavy metal coin, but like a metal coin that has substantial weight to it. And it's got the Siege of Dragon Spear medallion on one side and the ball skull with tears on the other side. If you're in the chat room right now in our Twitch stream and you want to be entered in a, the draw to win, type exclamation mark prize, like the word prize with an exclamation mark in front of it, no spaces. That'll automatically enter you in the... the app or whatever to be randomly drawn so these are like this is going to be noisy so sorry but i'm going to drop it to show how heavy it is damn right like it's serious stuff 
And these are not sold in stores. We don't have merchandise sales, but it will be with the collector's edition. And if you want your very own, you can get it right now by typing exclamation mark prize. What a beautiful medallion. You probably can't see it at this, this range, but isn't that beautiful? Should I tell my pog joke again? <laughs> no, I'll do it again next stream. Yes, we're all, we're all very, very old gamers here. But none of us like pogs except for Phil. He's the only one. All right, so we've done the draw, and the winner of this beautiful limited edition Dragon Spear, not available in stores, coin is... Lockmund. Lockmund. Congratulations, Lockmund. Send a private message to the Beamdog account on that Twitch uh, channel, and we will be in touch with you to get your shipping information so we can get you this beautiful coin. Congratulations. And now death. <laughs> and now death. So thanks for joining us yeah. today. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> oh Congratulations no. to all our prize winners. Thanks, everyone, who showed up to watch <laughs> film murder people. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed this sneak peek at Siege of Dragon Sphere. Please do check out our pre-orders on SiegeofDragonSphere.com. Look oh for no, the familiar, which is all Siege of Dragon Sphere themed content at the end of this month. Whoopsie you can pre-order our collector's edition, which is in limited quantities. Even though I keep saying that, it's actually true. I don't want people to miss out because they thought they'd have like months and months to order it. Get in as soon as you know that you want a copy. And um, what else? Follow us on the Beam blog. Yep. Blog.beamdog.com. I figure we should end on a glitch. So Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Go. All right. Um, somebody requested last time that we mentioned the Baldur's Gate subreddit, which is actually fairly popular. Oh, so yeah, that is. It's Reddit. really good. Dot com slash r slash Baldur's Gate. There is a very active community of Baldur's Gate fans, and they have a lot of fun discussions about builds and that sort of thing. Mm. Uh, beyond that, there are, of course, the traditional Baldur's Gate community sites. You can do a Google search, look for Gibberlings 3, that sort of thing. Um, huge communities. These guys have been playing the game for, for 20 years now. They know it inside and out. They've modded stuff to hell and back. They love the game. We love them. Um, so if you love Baldur's Gate and you want to keep it alive, join these communities. They're still very active. There's a lot of stuff going on. And after the release of Siege of Dragon Spear, it's only going to get bigger. So this is the perfect time to get involved with the Baldur's Gate community. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate you joining us. We really appreciate all the support that you've shown us. Yeah. And yeah, thanks for being part of our stream today. We'll keep uh, future stream dates posted on the Beam blog and on Facebook and Twitter. Yep. And uh, check us out on the forums. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for joining. Thanks.